going live now. So, all right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hour of Power, a prayer and empowerment call with you, the listeners in mind. I'm Elder Kendra Davis. The primary purpose of this conference call is threefold. Number one, this is a place where you will be empowered by the word of God. The Bible tells us that heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will last forever. Secondly, this is a place where you can submit your prayer requests, your praise reports, your testimonies, and we know that we will come together and touch and agree with you. Thirdly, this is a place where you will receive experience, strength, and hope from others through hearing their praise reports and testimonies. The Bible tells us that men are to always pray and not to faint, and that one can chase a thousand, but two can put ten thousand to flight. So on this morning, I want to welcome you as we join together on today to pray and to just intercede and to be empowered by the word of God, that God is definitely able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think, that God is still able to turn things around on your behalf, that God is still able to open up doors, that God is still able to heal your body, that God is still able to restore your family, to restore your finances, and that there is nothing too hard for God. So on this morning, I want you to know that you're at the right place at the right time to receive a word from God and to be empowered by the word of God and also a place that we can just come together and pray. So think it not strange on this week, people of God, the things that have come to try you, the things that have come to test you, the things that came to, dis to discourage you, but be of good faith, be of good cheer for this is the day that the Lord has made and we are already rejoicing and be and glad in it. This is the day. This is an opportune time for God to show himself strong and mighty in your life. So on this morning, I want to say welcome to those who are joining me on the conference call. I got you all on my um, Bluetooth this morning, so I figured I would be smart and be wise to start using my um, cell phone so that way I can use the Bluetooth in my ear instead of having to hold a house phone. So hopefully you all can hear me okay, those that are joining me on the conference call. And welcome to everyone on Facebook Live who is chiming in. So good morning. I see you all already um, chiming in early this morning. Morning. So let's just open up in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, oh God, and we just want to say thank you. We want to say how much we love you. We want to tell you this morning, oh God, how we appreciate all that you have done in our lives. And God, we're just so grateful this morning, Father, for how you just woke us up. You started us on our way. We got the use and the activities of our limbs, oh God. We thank you, Father, that when we look around our household, our family is fine. When we look around, our job is fine. Our health is it's fine. So God, for all these things, we just want to say thank you. God, with the cold days that have been throughout this week, we thank you, Father, that we had shelter. We thank you that we had heat. We thank you, Father, that all of our necessities was provided. So God, on this morning, we just want to enter into this time of intercession with thanksgiving. We want to enter into this time of prayer and intercession with just um, an attitude of gratitude, giving you glory, giving you honor, and giving you praise for all that you've done. Now, Spirit, Spirit of the living God, I ask that you will fall fresh in this place on today, that you will speak to the heart, speak to the mind of these, your people, oh God, that you will send your word to heal them, that you will send your word to empower them, that you will move by your power, move by your spirit, oh God, that somebody might leave this conference call, that somebody might leave this video, oh God, leave differently, but leave in power, leave challenge and leave change because you, God, because of your presence. So Father God, have your way on today and we give you glory, honor, and praise for what you're about to do in us and through us, oh God. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. On this morning for our moment of empowerment in the word of God. Um, um, for those who first time may be joining us on Facebook Live, like to give you a moment of empowerment in the word of God. And then we flow right into a time of prayer and intercession. So for the moment of empowerment, I want to just focus on one verse of scripture. If you would go with me to John 3 and 16. A very familiar scripture, but I need to focus on that this morning. John 3 and 16. The word of the Lord declares, for God so loved the world 
that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. For we know that God so loved the world, that's you and I, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, I'm a whosoever, you are whosoever, that whosoever would believe in him, that we would not perish, but have everlasting life. On this morning, I want to use for a topic, the greatest gift of all, mm -hmm. the greatest gift of all. In our society during the holiday seasons like this, many folks are caught up in the hustle and the bustle of shopping, looking, searching for the right gifts, looking and searching for the perfect gift. You know that gift that is kind of like a, cheer, a tear jerker? When you get the right gift and you're waiting for that aha or that shock effect that when a person opens up the gift that you're looking for a reaction. And so you spend countless times in the shopping mall. You spend countless time in traffic. You're enduring all kinds of things in order to get that special gift. But here's the truth. While you're spending all, perhaps, all of your money, while you're out there spending all of your quality time looking for this perfect gift, waiting in lines, enduring attitudes, enduring negative disposition, because you know sometimes people ain't always nice, people be jacked up and stuff, but you know that's their stuff. But you're doing all of that, and for some, time, for some people, they will get so caught up in buying a gift that they will max out their credit cards trying to keep up. They will run in, run themselves in debt and then spend the next 6, 8, 10, 12 months living in a state of oppression because they bound by all of this debt and these things that they have purchased for that special gift. But here's the honest truth. I hate to pop your bubble because all of us like to shop and we think that our gifts is always so perfect. But here's the honest truth. After you done did all of that shopping, there will be some people just as sure as grits is grocery and today is Saturday, baby. Just as sure as today is what it is, your special gift might be the very gift that somebody is standing in line with on Monday looking for a refund or an exchange. Mm-hmm. I know y'all ain't going to really admit that, but I'm one for sure that I'll take something back in the New York minute. So, um, so sometimes with the point that I'm making is you will invest your time. You will invest your energy trying to please people. You will invest your resources trying to put a smile on somebody's face, but they may not even like or appreciate or want the very thing that you're, you're getting them. So this is where we have to really be prayerful, people of God. This is not on my notes, but while we're in doing this shopping and this Christmas season, season, it's important that you be wise. So the Bible tells us that the Lord gives seed to the sower and he desires us to be faithful stewards over that which he's given us. So it's important that you're not out here going crazy trying to keep up with the Joneses, buying stuff that you don't need, buying stuff that your family don't need, they don't even want, and then they, they end up taking it back um, a few days later. So this morning I wanted to talk to you about the greatest gift of all. This gift was so great that God knew that it was the perfect gift. He knew that this was going to be that special gift. He knew that this was a gift that was so important and so needed that I believe in my own imagination. He said, when he gave this gift, he said, no refunds, no exchange. Come on here, somebody. He said, no refunds, no exchange. So even when you've been naughty and not been nice, he still gave us the greatest gift of all. Even when you've been jacked up in sin, he still said, I'm going to give you the greatest gift of all. He didn't do like some of us do when we've been naughty. We give a, we give people, what's that little Christmas thing? A lump of coal and all that stuff. But he said, in spite of your technicalities, in spite of your sins, I still going to give you the greatest gift of all. So what's the greatest gift? I'm glad you asked. If you look at our text this morning, John 3 and 16, for God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only begotten son. See, we don't need to get caught up in the pagan holiday part of Christmas that we miss the important part that this is a time and a season that we're celebrating the birth. We're celebrating the gift of God to all of us, and that's Jesus Christ. And that, that's, that is a special gift. That is the greatest gift of all. See, when God gave us this gift, 
He knew that we was going to mess up. He knew that we was going to fall short. But in spite of falling short, guess what? It ain't nothing you can do that can provoke God to change his mind about you. So on this morning, my assignment was to remind somebody to get it in your spirit. Focus on things that matters versus things that's important and things that matter. Stop swallowing a camel and then choke on a gnat. Some of us get so caught up on trying to please people, but are you pleasing God? You're caught up on spending money and doing all of this stuff, but the real reason for the season is all about Jesus and him being that special gift, that greatest gift for all of us. For we know had it not been for this gift, all of us would be busting hell wide open with gasoline drawers on. Yeah, I sure did say that. If it had not been for this special gift from God, all of us would be somewhere in hell. But because God loved us so much, he said, I'm going to give you this gift. I'm going to give you this gift. No refunds, no exchange. I'm going to give you this gift because I love you so much. I'm going to keep giving you life in spite of the times that you have fallen short. I've given you the greatest gift of all. In spite of the times that you feel like or people said you was not going to make it, folks thought you didn't qualify. He said, I'm going to give you the greatest gift. And the gift that I give, it has a, 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 a subtle way of shutting the mouths of your critics. It has a, a great way of even allowing the enemy to know that you'll make a comeback. And that's the greatest gift of all. For God so loved the world. So this morning, there may be somebody who stressed out about Christmas and you don't have a gift for your children or perhaps you don't have all the money that you desire to do things. Some of you struggling, trying to figure out how you're going to pay your bills. But the, the blessed part about it is We've all been given a gift, a gift that keeps on giving. And that's the gift of God, the gift of love, the gift of, of sacrifice, the gift of grace and mercy. Those God gives us so many gifts. The Bible tells us that daily he loads us with benefits. Some benefits packages on the job is like great benefits, but then there are some benefits that's just supernaturally and just super duper awesome. And that's the gift of God and his benefits. Think about it. His benefits and his, his blessings and his gifts have no strings attached. And God loves us that much. Because sometimes people will give you a gift. you got to be careful, especially during Christmas and stuff. People will give you gifts with hit and modus. People will give you things because if I give you this, then you got to do this, blah, blah, blah. But the good thing about God, when he give it to you, it ain't no strings attached. God is a gentleman. That even if you decide not to accept his gift, his gift of salvation, his gift of redemption, his gift of deliverance, guess what? He's patiently waiting. He waiting for you to get yourself together. He's waiting for you to surrender the high cost of low living. He's waiting for you to give up a life of sin. He's waiting for you to turn aside, to lay aside every weight that was so easily beset you so you can receive. And live the life that Jesus died for you to have. Because you all know the story. Not only did he give us the greatest gift. But that gift was a ransom from you and I. That gift was the thing that pardoned our sins. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So had it not been for the special gift of Jesus Christ. The very reason why we celebrate Christmas. There will be no redemption. There will be no pardoning of our sins. So on this morning, I pray you got something out of that little uh, moment of devotion just to empower you to, to think on the things that matters. And that's the greatest gift of all, the gift of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So with that being said, it ain't no refunds or exchange. God ain't changed his mind about you. If he called you to be a man of God, if he called you to be a woman of God, it ain't nothing you can do to change his mind. See, men change their mind. You know, they uh, fluky and stuff. If you don't please them or make them happy, they'll just up and, and just boot you off the island. But that ain't God. He's so committed to you. He loves you so much that he says, I'm not going to give up on you. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going to wait here patiently as evidenced by his word that says, that he's married to the backslider. So on this morning, wherever you are, whatever you're going through, some of y'all be watching these videos up in the dope houses doing all kinds of stuff. Because guess what? I know there is a tribe of folks that follow me 
that know not Jesus in the way that everybody else know him in um that's going to church and they got all this religiosity. There's some folks attached to my life and attached to anointing on my life who coming out of prison, who sitting up in crack houses this morning, who been struggling with gambling, all kinds of addictions. They caught up in sin and typically they won't come to your church or uh, bedside Baptist cause sister Kellogg's and uh, brother Applejack's. They always judging them and that kind of stuff. But I know that there's some people attached to my life and the anointing on my life that I'm the voice that's been assigned to speak into their ear. So I said, I'll let to say, I know some y'all watching this video you'll be somewhere else but guess what wherever you are god is faithful enough to come and see about you you hear what i'm telling you the eyes of the lord is upon the righteous if god watches over the lilies of the field he watches over the birds of the air he's definitely gonna watch over you so so this morning wherever you are just know that god ain't changed his mind about you if you got to go through whatever you got to go through to be purged, to be renewed, to be restored, God is still going to perfect his work on the inside of you. The scripture says, let he who has begun a good work complete the work until the day of Jesus Christ. They got to give y'all the scripture to back this up because y'all, some of y'all probably be thinking, oh, you know, the religious folks like that girl is crazy. How can you say that God is watching over the crackhead? God is watching over this person that's in sin. Well, look, first Peter three and 12 says for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So guess what? Even if you fall short, even if you fall down and you then got caught up, tangled up into something, didn't the scripture tell us that the just man falls seven times and keep getting back up? So I done got all off of my original topic, but somebody pulling on me in the spirit and you need to hear this, that even when church folks are trying to judge you and, and sometimes religious, I shouldn't say church folks, but religious folks who think they all deep and they walking with Jesus in the cool of the day and like they boo-boo don't stink and act like they ain't never messed up or nothing like that. But let me tell you something, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, yo, let me say that again, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If it had not been for the gift of God, if it had not been for Jesus, would none of us be worthy to even stand in the, in the position to even receive the blessings of God? But because the grace of God is without repentance, because the grace of God and the mercy of God, we are able to be presented faultless. We are presented blameless before God. Come on here, somebody. So the love of God, the mercy of God is able to redeem you. The love of of God. The mercy of God is able to restore you. So on this morning, you may be jacked up in your head. You may be under the influence. You may be watching this video high and out of your mind. But guess what? God still loved you. He still loved the drug addict. He still loved the gang banger. He still loved the drug dealer. Come on here, somebody. God didn't allow his son Jesus to just come for the religious folks. Because if that's the case, he wouldn't have needed a savior. We wouldn't have needed a savior. We wouldn't have needed a redeemer. But because he gave the greatest gift, and that's the gift of life, the gift of Jesus Christ, that's for all of us, yo. For all of us to have the opportunity to receive salvation. So just know that all eyes is on you. And I ain't talking about the eyes of people. Because their, their eyes really don't matter. But the eyes of God. Is on you. Second Chronicles 16 and 9 says. For the eyes of the Lord. Run to and fro. Throughout the whole earth. To show himself strong. On the behalf of those. Whose heart is perfect towards him. That's the scripture I wanted to read a few minutes ago. Whose heart is perfect before him. Guess what? If your heart is right before God. You may not have everything lined up, but he sees your heart, baby. He sees your heart. He knows about your struggle. Because, see, everybody ain't, ain't stuck in sin that want to stay there. Some people won't help, want to get out. But but they, they don't feel comfortable coming to, to whatever that particular ministry is because they fear they'll be judged. But the scripture says, if your heart is perfect towards him. If at first you don't succeed, 
try and try again. If your heart is perfect towards God, he says, my eyes is going to run to and fro. I'm looking for a way to bless you. I'm looking for a way to bring you out. I'm looking for a way to open the door. I'm looking for a way to send a blessing in your life because your heart is perfect towards me because your heart is right to do the right thing because your heart is in the right place. He, and I just hear God saying this morning, yeah, yeah, I know you in a struggle. Yeah, yeah, I know you caught up into some things, but your heart is perfect. Come on here, somebody. I'm not somebody who's always done everything right. And there's been some places in my life that I was jacked up. I was tied up, tangled up into some things. But good God Almighty, I thank him this morning for that greatest gift, that gift of salvation. Because even though when I was in sin, oh, come on, can we just be real? When you're in the church, but still living in sin, when you know to do right, when you've accepted the Lord as your Savior, come on and let's be real. Some of us been jacked up since we've been saved. Some of us been tied up into some mess since we've been saved. I can't get no help in this Pentecostal tabernacle this morning. Some of y'all act like y'all always been right. But guess what? Let me just keep it 100 for the people that really, that really, 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 really know something about the grace of God. When I should have been uh, caught up, when I should have been dead, when I should have been uh, counted as done, the grace of God and the mercy of God restored me. Why? Because my heart was perfect. Even though he said, Kendra, I could take you out. Kendra, I could cause you to be, to pay a penalty because of your sin. It was my heart that was perfect towards him. He said, he said he wants to show himself strong and mighty whose heart is perfect towards him. Some of you are where you are today. That you're redeemed, that you're walking and receiving the blessings of God because your heart was pure, because your heart was perfect towards him. Come on here. Um, there are some, um, some good people who are caught up into some stuff. Some good people who are crying out for some help. Some good people who have a relationship with God that's maybe not like yours or mine. But their heart is perfect towards him. So on this morning, for whoever needed this, be encouraged. Don't worry about if you pray like Sister Applejack or if you can preach or you can do all this stuff like Brother Cantaloupe. Don't worry about measuring yourself up with people. Do what God has called you to do and receive what God has in store for you. Because God has given of himself. He's given of his son, Jesus, that you and I both can be received, that you and I both can receive eternal life. Come on here, somebody. That you and I all can be saved. For the Lord watches over us and he protects us. So I tell some, some people sometime about being in protective custody. In Psalms 91, the scripture tells us, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we can say of the Lord that he is my God. He's your God. He's our refuge, our God in whom we trust. A thousand can fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand, but it shall not come nigh us. Only with our eyes shall we see the reward of the wicked. So when your heart is right before God, when you are in right relationship with, with God, it don't matter what other people think. It don't matter. None of that stuff. You got to make sure your heart is right, that you've been talking to God for yourself. Last week, I talked about the big G. You got to make sure you and the big G got a relationship, yo. So sometimes you just got to keep it 100 with yourself. Some of us will really do good if you have a self-inventory. So what, what does that mean? That means you, you, you call yourself into office, meaning you, you have a conversation with yourself about yourself. So some of it, when you begin to start doing that, checking in with yourself, then you'll have a peace that surpasses all understanding. Some of us say we deliver from people, but we're really not delivered from people because we continue to do things, trying to impress people, and they don't be impressed anyway. But the greatest thing is when your ways please God, he'll make even your enemies be at peace with you. So what matters most in life is the greatest gift, and that's the gift of life. So live life like it's golden because you only live once. I'm, uh, during this holiday season, and even as we prepare to um, transition over into 2017, make it up in your mind. Get your mind right. 
Get your mind right that you're going to focus on those things that's lovely, honest, just, and of good report. You're not going to spend time chasing down lies. You're not going to spend time focusing on foolish stuff because you got too much life to live. You got too many goals to achieve. You got too many things you want to achieve. You got too many people you want to reach. So in this season of your life, make it up in your mind. You're going to embrace the gift that God has given you. You're going to embrace this life that he's given you. You're going to take advantage of this second chance he's given you. To make a first impression, you're going to take advantage of every open door that he opens for your life. So when you are a person that's on a mission, when you got things to do, places to go, and people to see, some stuff just don't matter no more. You know what I'm saying? So in the words of the late Johnny Cochran, if it don't fit, it must have quit. So this is a good time that you need to start sending out um, uh, notices of eviction. That some people didn't fit your life in 2016, and you're not going to carry them over. Over into 2017 because you've been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Some of you on this morning, you need to make it up in your mind. Some behaviors, some addictions, some patterns, some things that you've been doing, you're not going to carry over into 2017 because you're embracing the gift of God. You're embracing this new thing. I remember the scripture says over in uh, Isaiah. I uh, looked at that this morning too. Isaiah says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. For behold, I'll do a new thing and it shall spring forth. So I didn't left my notes, but I just got the flow in the spirit for a moment. Some of you all need to just do, I don't know, I think it was Otis Redden or somebody that had this song that said, let's just kiss and say goodbye. Some of you need to, to kiss some things in your life goodbye because it has held you down. It has held you back. But as you begin to embrace the gift of God, you begin to embrace the greatest gift and that's life. You will begin to say, what's that girl name on uh, Color Purple Soap, uh, Miss Seeley? I may be black and I may be ugly, but I'm still here. You got to make it up in your mind. I'm going to embrace the gift of God and be because I'm still here, because I'm still standing, because I still got breath in my body, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live to the fullest. I ain't trying to keep up with the Joneses. I'm going to live my life to the fullest. I'm going to tap into my purpose. I'm going to accomplish my dreams. I'm going to do everything that God says I can do because I'm going to live through everything that the enemy thought was going to destroy me. Come on here, somebody. So on this morning... Embrace the gift. Embrace the gift. He's giving it to you with no refunds or exchange. He ain't trying to take it back. He ain't trying to take, he ain't trying to take the gift back, the grace back, the mercy back. He said, freely, I give to you my only begotten son, that whosoever would just simply believe. He ain't going to even take you through no whole initiation period. You ain't got to do nothing but just simply believe. So on this morning, perhaps there's somebody watching this video or somebody on the live conference call and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal savior. So let me just give it to you real. It's simple as A, B, and C. The first thing, if you admit that you are a sinner, admit it. You ain't got to admit it to no person. You talking about your relationship with God. Admit that you are a sinner. What does that look like? God. I done messed up. God, I done fell down again. God, I know I said I would never do this anymore, but I'm right back doing again. Admit it. The best way to be delivered, to be set free, the first step is just admitting that you messed up. The second thing that's A, B, believe. Believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Believe that God sent his son, Jesus to die on the cross for our sins, that we, you and I, could have a right to the tree of life. And see, simply confess. Confess your sin and then confess Jesus as Lord. And you are saved. For we, we are saved by faith. We ain't saved by works. We ain't saved by how much money we can, we can give or what kind of things we can buy. We're saved by grace through faith. We are saved. We didn't earn salvation. We, we couldn't earn it. Ain't none of us perfect. We, it's not earned. It's not based on all this religious stuff. If you come to so many Bible studies and do blank, 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 A, B, and C, uh-uh. We say by grace through faith. So on this morning, I want to introduce to some and present to others the greatest gift of all. So if you're here today, whether you're on the call or whether you're watching this 
um, a Facebook Live video, just know if you prayed that prayer and said, God, I'm a sinner. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And you confess your sin and then confess Jesus as Lord. You're, you are saved. Perhaps there's some this morning who um, have fallen short and you want to get things back right with God. 1 John 1 and 9 says, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So if that's you today and you want to rededicate your life to God, that's the greatest gift of all. What better way could you celebrate Christmas in giving your life back to God, rededicating, recommitting yourself to Christ? So if that's you today and you want to rededicate your life to God, it's simple. It's simple as you just crying out to God and saying, God, I know I'm a sinner. I know I've messed up. I know I've made you so many promises, but God, I want to come back to you. So if this is you today, God is here. He's willing. He's able. He's always there to answer your prayers. He's always there. Don't get, dis don't get distracted by what folks be telling you and all that stuff that he don't hear a sinner's prayer. How in the world can you, I, I ain't even finna go there. If you are a sinner and you pray, that's how God hears your prayers and he saves you. So cry out to God for salvation. Cry out to God for redemption, for rededicating your life. Today is a good day for you to receive Jesus as Lord. He's the greatest gift of all. So on today, I pray and trust that something was said for, um, somebody to empower you on today. I know that word wasn't for everybody and it wasn't my necessary plan to go there, but the Lord began to uh, prick, uh, to impress upon my spirit that this video, let me tell y'all something, this Facebook live and this conference call every Saturday, it ain't about Kendra. It ain't about popularity, but this is serious business to me, yo. This is about souls. This is about being able to reach people who perhaps don't come to church, reach people who in the hospitals, reach people who can be summer everywhere, who just need a little bit of hope, who just need a little bit of faith, who just need a little bit of encouragement. And for this morning, there was somebody, I don't know who you are, but there is somebody watching this call. I know what I know, like I know there is somebody on this call who needed to know how to get saved. They surrounded by all these people, but ain't nobody went through the plan of salvation with them. They surrounded by all these people, but they needed somebody to be able to break it down to them in a way that they can receive it. A, B, and C. They needed to know how to get back connected to God. So on this morning, I pray and trust something was said during that moment of empowerment to bless your life. If it wasn't, keep coming back. Keep coming back. It's just like chicken, baby. You uh, eat the meat and spit out the bones. So what you didn't like, it's okay. But somebody else needed to hear that this morning. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and transition from the empowerment piece of this conference call into the time of intercession. So I've had several folks to chime in um, with their prayer requests on the conference call. Um, is there anyone on Facebook Live, let me scroll back through, who have prayer requests, praise reports, testimonies, anything that you want to share? So before we go into intercession and then if there's those on a conference call who have prayer requests who didn't get your prayer requests in, you can go ahead and just give me um, those as well. I can hear you. I got you all in my ear on the Bluetooth. Any prayer requests this morning? I'm just going to pause for just a moment and scroll through. I see y'all love and hearts and likes coming through. God bless you all. I see so many of you all are watching on this morning. Praise God. Um, for Facebook Live, any prayer requests, praise reports, testimonies? Amen. Glory to God. All right. I see um, Miss Janet Huntley. I got your um, prayer request. I'm jotting it down um, even now. Amen. Miss Mildred, um, I see you. Got your prayer request for um, Mother East. And Annie, all right, see your um, prayer request, Vernita, for deliverance this morning, amen. Prayers for the family, I see your request, Michelle. Um, um, praying for your daughter, Fanta, who's dealing with um, a cold, um, who's been sick, 
Amen. Um, praying for the will of God. See you, Darlene. Good morning, Prophetess Darlene. Amen. For the will of God, the purpose of God, praying for divine health. God bless you. I see you, Michelle, this morning. Um, praying for the children at United House of United House. Amen. God bless you um, this morning, woman of God. Amen. And Miss Valerie, good morning, Miss Val. God bless you. Thank you for joining this morning. Um, amen. Good morning, Miss Tony. I see you this morning praying for your um, daughters this morning. God bless you all. Amen. All right. Well, if there's any other prayer requests that come up as we enter into a time of intercession, please feel free to type it in your um, box. Um, if you're on the call and you have a prayer request, you can feel free to just release it and um, we can go from there. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you that this is the day that you've made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it, oh God. God, this morning, you see the needs, you see the wants and the desires of these, your people, oh God. And God, we're reminded that your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek your face, turn from their wicked ways, you said, oh God, then you will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal the land. So God, this morning, you know that I our land needs a healing. You know that our land needs restoration on today, God. Our life needs to be restored. Our families need restored. Our families need to be restored. So Spirit of the living God, we need you now in the name of Jesus. God, this morning, I want to pray and lift up, God, the entrepreneurs, God. We want to start this morning praying for every business, every entrepreneur, every person who has a dream, every person who has a desire, who has something on the inside of them that they want to release. We want to pray this morning for those who have books, those who have businesses that maybe have not even been released yet. Father, you told me and us in your word that you give us the power to get wealth. Father, so on today, I pray for every business. I pray for every person who has a witty and creative idea. I pray for every person who's in the struggle, who's been slaying, slaying, slaying every day, trying to get the business off the ground. There is somebody this morning who's been in the struggle that got the business plan. They got the idea, but it seemed like the pieces ain't quite coming in together. The contracts ain't coming together. The new clients ain't coming together. But God, this morning, I ask according to Proverbs 21 and 1, that you would turn the hearts of consumers, that you would turn the hearts of philanthropists, that you would turn the hearts of CEOs, that you would turn the hearts, whatever it is that these small business owners need in order for their business to go to the next level, to the next I mentioned we're praying for it even now in Jesus name. Heavenly Father on this morning, oh God, I pray Father God for that business owner. I don't know why business owners, you are in my spirit this morning like never before. There are some business owners contemplating should they shut a business down? Should they stop a business? So God, this morning I ask for you to give clarity. I ask for you to give divine insight. I ask God that you would give wisdom. For God, your word says wisdom is the principal thing. So God, this morning, give somebody wisdom. Give them divine insight, discernment, God. God, take them behind the veil that you will show them what needs to be done. God, you said there is nothing hidden that won't be revealed. So Father, reveal to the entrepreneur your hidden secrets, oh God. Your hidden secrets for branding or perhaps rebranding. Your hidden secrets for marketing, oh God. Your hidden secrets for partnerships, oh God. Lord, God, I pray even now, God, perhaps there's some entrepreneurs that's in the process of making partnerships, God. God, give them divine insight that they will not be connected with the spirit of the python. They will not be connected with the Jezebel spirit. They will not be connected with that which is not of you. So, Lord God, we ask on today, not only for the entrepreneur, but for every person on this call, on Facebook Live, we ask, oh God, that you will remove the Akins out of of our account. So God, as we prepare to be progressive and prepare to move forward, as we're preparing to move into 2017, we're asking now, oh God, that you will remove the wicked from the king's throne, that your righteousness will be established. Remove the wicked out
out of our lives. Remove those with hidden agendas. Remove those with hidden schemes. Remove those with malicious intentions. Remove them now in the name of Jesus. So Lord God, we refuse to be a people who live in deception, who live in self-deception or regular deception, oh God. We refuse to cover our eyes and act like we don't see the devil. We refuse to live like Alice in Wonderland with them rosy red glasses on. But God, you said in your word that you will show us all things, that you will reveal all things to us. So God, on today, I ask that you will reveal people who are not the will of God to be in our lives, whether it's in our business, whether it's professionally, personally, oh God, remove the wicked, oh God, remove the achings out of our camp. God, we didn't been through too many battles. We didn't been through too many wars dealing with aching. We didn't lost some things, but God, in this season, we believe according to Joel 2, that you're going to restore unto us everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust has eaten up. So God, as we prepare for total restoration, as we're preparing for you to break through in our lives, we ask, oh God, that you would just simply remove it. Remove the wicked. Remove those things, God. God, there's somebody, even they know, they know, they know, they know the folks who don't have their best interest in heart, in mind. But God, they're struggling with letting it go. They're struggling with letting the people go. So God, this morning we want to pray for their heart. We want to pray for their mind, their will, and their emotions that they can let it go. That they'll be able to detach themselves. They'll be able to detach their business. They'll be able to detach their lives, oh God. So Father God, we just ask for your grace and for your mercy for business owners. We ask for your grace and for your mercy, for your strength. To be able to lay aside every weight that so easily beset us. Your word said it, God, that we are to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us. God, the weights ain't necessarily just sins of commission, but sometimes even sins of of, of omission and commission. So commission is things that you committed, things that you did, but God, omission is those things that we fail to do, we fail to cut off, we fail to, to, to sever ties. So God, bid unto us according to your word and according to your will, that your blessings will be upon every business. We pray and we believe it now, oh God. We're praying, God, not only for businesses, but this morning, I want to pray and lift up the finances of these, your people, oh God. Father, your word says that we are to eat in plenty and want for nothing, that we are to owe no man nothing but to love him. God, your word says that our bonds shall be plenteous in goods, Father. You promise oh, us, oh God, that we're going to we can eat the good of the land. God, you said whatsoever we ask in your name that you will do it. So, Father God, this morning, I ask for your blessings. I ask for financial breakthroughs for these, your people, God. Lord God, some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but God, we choose to trust in you. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous can always run to you, and they are safe. So, God, this morning, I pray and I intercede for the finances, for the provision of these, your people. God, because you are Bell Prism. You're the God of the breakthrough. God, this morning, because you're El Shaddai, you're all sufficient. Because you are Jehovah Jireh, you're our provider. God, you've proven yourself time and time again. So, God, this morning, I ask for your provision for these, your people, oh God, that they will leave the place of not enough and move to a place of just enough. But, God, I thank you that you will even push them, catapult them to the place of more than enough because you are a more than enough kind of God. So, Father, this morning, we ask, God, that you will cause all of us, not just me and my foe and no more, but all of us to live in that place of abundance, that we will have more than enough, that we can care for the widows and the orphans, because that's what your word says, that we can care for the widows, the orphans, and those who have nothing. So, Father God... We ask for blessings, for prosperity, God, not just for ourselves, but even bless us that we might be a blessing to others. God, we stand firmly this morning in prayer, and we pray according to Luke 6 and 38. You said, give, and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto our bosom. But God, this morning, we want to put a spend on that prayer and ask God that you will make us the man, make us to be the blessing, make us to be the 
a pipeline that we can bless others, that we will have more than enough in our lives, that we can bless others, that we can provide, that we can pay bills, that we can do things, Lord God, that we can help remove the burden off of their lives, oh God. So God, bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory. God, somebody this morning, they don't know how the way is going to be made. They don't know how the door is going to be open, but God, make a way. Father, you promised to make a way in the wilderness and even provide rivers in our desert. So somebody who's been experiencing a season of drought, a season of lack, a season that just seems like things haven't been coming together, I pray even now, Lord God, that you will send your provision now in Jesus' name. The same way you provided for the man of God who was coming through the city, the same way you provided for the widow with two mites, the same way you provided for the widow with the pot of oil. I decree and declare, Lord God, that you will send your provision now in Jesus' name. God now, send now prosperity. Send now prosperity, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that it is your will. It is your will to bless us because your word said it, God. God, all I got is your word. And I know that sometimes men's word ain't been about nothing, but your word cannot and will not return void, but it will accomplish everything that you set it out to do. So God, this morning, your word says that you take pleasure in the prosperity of your people. So God, I pray for prosperity for these, your people. Now I pray Lord God, that you will bless their, bless the works of their hands, that you will order their steps Lord God, that you will cause them to have right connections and, and right uh, relationships, Lord God, that they will have all that they need in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, this morning, there's so many prayer requests as we transition to now pray. We pray for entrepreneurs. We pray for finances. Um, we want to pray this morning for health and healing. Um, I search Facebook and I begin to, to pray and to intercede for so many um, people throughout this week. And there were so many needs. So we want to just pray for health and healing this morning. So Father God, we thank you because you are Jehovah Rapha. Because you're the God that heals us and makes us whole. We thank you you this morning for total health and healing. God, you heal all manner of sickness and disease, and there is nothing too hard for you. So, Father God, this morning, I pray your healing power and healing virtue for these, your people, even now in Jesus' name. Your word tells us if there be any sick among us to call for the elders of the church and to pray. So, Father God, this morning, I pray and I intercede for every person under the sound of my voice who may be experiencing sickness. Lord God, this morning, send your word to the hospital in Georgia. And I ask God for your healing virtue to surround Brian Conrad, oh God. I ask God that your word, your presence will cause manifestation of healing in his pancreas. Healing even with his glucose levels, Lord God. We know according to the report, he was able to drive himself to the hospital with a sugar level of 800. 111. So God, we give you glory even now, God, that you didn't allow anything tragic to happen, but that he is being stabilized. So Father, in this atmosphere, we lift up Brian Conrad before you now in Jesus name. God, in this atmosphere this morning, I want to pray for my sister and friend, Erica Simons. Oh God, Lord God, you know all about her health condition. You know all about what's going on in her body. So we're decreeing and declaring total healing. Now we send your word to the the hospital, Lord God, that you will heal her, that you will restore her, Lord God, that everything will work out just fine and that she will be released from the hospital not many days hence. God, in this atmosphere, there's so many people dealing with uh, sinus issues, dealing with all kinds of uh, ears and um, stuff going on in the atmosphere, flus and colds. So we want to just pray and lift up those individuals now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I lift up my sister and friend, Thomasina Jenkins Boyd. Um, this morning. God, you know that she has been such a faithful trailblazer in outreach for many years. God, you see for many years, she's fed the homeless for many years. She's 
giving out Christmas gifts at the homeless shelters. God, you know all about Thomasina Jenkins' board. So, Father God, Thomasina needs a healing. We know that hospice has said one thing. We know that the doctors have said one thing. But, God, we still choose to believe the report of the Lord. And your report says that you are a healer. Your report says that your blood is still able to heal and to restore. So, Father, in this atmosphere, we want to touch and agree and believe God for Sister Thomasina. We want to believe, God, that you will, you have begun a good work in her, that you will complete the work until the day of Jesus Christ. So, Father, we believe you now for the Thomasina Jenkins, for the Jenkins family, the Boyd family, now in Jesus' name. So, we're praying, God, for your perfect, your perfectness to be manifested in her body. Father, you're the author and the finisher of her faith. Before she was formed in her mother's womb, you knew her and had a plan and a purpose for her life. So, Father God, we know that your plan and purpose is that she is to be healed in Jesus' name. God, in this atmosphere, I want to lift up again. Sister Rolinda Carter, Roro Bailey, I'm sorry, not Carter, Bailey, we want to lift up Roro before you, oh God, that although she struggled this week with some headaches and some things going on in her body, but God, I thank you for total restoration now in Jesus' name, so we touch and agree in this atmosphere, we send your word now to Rolinda's house, we send your word now to the houses of these your people, Lord God, that they will be healed, that they will be delivered, they will be set free in Jesus' name, God, in this atmosphere, I lift up Valencia before you who's been struggling, going through recovery and has some things going on in her legs. So Father God, in this atmosphere, I pray for Valencia now in Jesus name. Heavenly Father, I pray for um, Sister Linda Key um, Trails prayer request this morning. We know that Linda Key has been struggling with battling a type of cancer. But God, in this atmosphere, I just want to take authority and want to pray for various forms of cancer. God, I ain't scared. Because your word tells me that you hear all manner of sickness and disease. So there's nothing too hard for you. AIDS ain't too hard. Cancer ain't too hard. Tuberculosis ain't too hard. COPD ain't too hard. Diabetes ain't too hard. Congestive heart failure ain't too hard. God, I'm so confident. My faith is like out the roof. If you cause a, a dead man who was in the grave four days and his body began to stink to make a comeback, Ain't no way in the world you can convince me that you're not able to heal cancer, AIDS, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease. So God, in this atmosphere, I ask God that you will charge the people of God's faith, that their faith will go to another dimension, that they will see that you're a large and in charge, see that you're the greatest physician that ever walked the earth. So God, in this atmosphere, we intercede, we bombard heaven on the behalf of those who've been struggling with cancer, struggling with chemo therapy, radiation, and all of these things, oh God. Heal our land. So, Father God, we know that you heal cancer. We know that you heal cancer. We know that you heal cancer. God, you heal Dee Dee Jacardia Solomon Lynch of cancer. You heal Wanda Edie of cancer. You heal Nancy Armstrong of cancer. God, there's so many people that I know that you healed the cancer. Kim Barr Jones, you healed her of cancer. You healed George Banks of cancer. God, you healed so many people of cancer. Your word says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So the same way you heal them, I believe that you will heal these, these your people now who are struggling with diagnosis of cancer because your word says, God, that you are no respecter of person. If you healed all of them, you heal them, heal Clinton Van Hook, heal Linda Keys, oh God, heal Yolanda Patterson, oh God, and anybody else who's struggling with cancer, we just want to put, draw a line in the sand and tell the devil enough is enough. We sick and tired of this cancer foolishness. In this atmosphere, we lift up and we cover Mr. Mac on today, who is also struggling with cancer. For all of those dealing with cancer, we touch and agree in this atmosphere and believe you to heal cancer. I ask, oh God, that you will cause cancerous tumors, molecules to dry up, to die to be released from the bodies of these your people. God, cancer has trespassed on your property. Cancer has trespassed on your property. God, didn't your word says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. These are your children, oh God. So God, I'm asking you to move. I'm asking you to heal. I'm asking you to deliver these your people from the effects of cancer. 
now in Jesus name God I just believe I believe I believe but God even for those who are on this call those who are on Facebook live they believe but help their unbelief God when their faith wants to fail them and they feel weary on the journey and they're looking at the natural and feeling these things and the effects of chemo and radiation help their unbelief God we believe but help our unbelief during moments of peril when we don't know what to believe anymore help our unbelief, oh God, help, God, help, help, help. God, you healed Linda, Linda, um, uh, Linda McCray of cancer some years ago, ovarian cancer. You've healed prostate cancer. You've healed pancreatic cancer. You've healed breast cancer. You've healed lung cancer. God ain't nothing too hard for you. You are the greatest oncologist ever. So, Father God, heal these your people of cancer now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I ask this morning that you will heal Fanta's daughter, three-year-old who's been struggling with some type of cold and things going on. We lift up Sister Michelle Green before you who is also struggling with some type of health issue, Father God. Lord God, this morning, I want to switch gears and ask for you to heal those who are struggling with addictions, addictions to alcohol, addictions to drugs, because that's a sickness too, Father. So, Father God, in this atmosphere... I want to lift up those who are struggling with various forms of addictions. Father God, you see the struggle. You see the struggle during the holidays of those who may be bound by addictions and bound by various addictions to drugs, alcohol, sex, gambling, or whatnot. In this atmosphere, we, we love them enough to pray and to cover them, oh God. We're asking God that you will cover them under your blood, that no weapon formed against them will prosper. We're praying even now, Lord God, for total deliverance, that you will set them free in Jesus' name. We're praying even now, Lord God, God, for your divine protection. God, this morning, somebody's got children that's out of the will of God. It, that's it. Whoever they are, it's somebody's child that's strung out. There's somebody's child that's making wrong decisions. So, Father, in this atmosphere, we cover them now in Jesus' name. We're praying, God, for children, God, from the north, south, east, and west, whether they're infants, toddlers, adolescents, grown behind adults. We're just praying for somebody's child this morning, that somebody's child will make better decisions and be free from the various vices and addictions that will try to hold them hostage in Jesus name. God, this morning, I just want to pray and lift up family before you, oh God. We want to lift up the Hazel Amwa family, oh God, who have been, who have experienced um, death, Travelers Rest Church in Georgia, who've experienced some losses and experiencing some, some setbacks. We want to pray for them now in Jesus name. We want to lift up Sister Reese before you, oh God, and her family. We just pray your continued blessings over them. And we just want to celebrate the blessings and all that you've done in Reese's life and pray God that you would continue to bless she and Lauren and her fiance and all their plans for their wedding. We just ask your blessings over their marriage even now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I want to lift up Sister Trail before you, oh God, who submitted her prayer request, asking you, God, that you would just help her, God, as she's experiencing the side effects of having been broken in and someone violated her family, broke into her home and stolen some things, oh God. We're praying even now, Lord God, that you will allow Trail to make a comeback, that she will bounce back from this setback that the enemy thought that he was sending to distract her, sending to throw her off focus, Lord God. So, Father God, we just ask, Lord God, for you to be with Trail, that you will surround her, that you will restore, according to Joel 2, that you will restore unto Trail everything that the canker worm, the palm worm, and the locust has eaten up. We pray this morning, oh God, that you will even bless Trail with a new job as this upcoming year comes, that you will bless her with a new job and that she will eat in plenty and want for nothing that all of her needs and her family's needs shall be met in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, this morning, I want to lift up Mother Helen before you. We thank you, Lord God, for Miss Helen's faithfulness to this call, that Miss Helen has been on this call pretty much every Saturday for the past two, three years and has not missed a Saturday. So, Father God, we're just praying for her faithfulness. And, God, you see all about her procedure that's coming up soon, Lord God. But we ask, Father God, that you will go with her, that you will send your angels on assignment to protect Miss Helen during this procedure, Lord God. We thank 
thank you, Lord God, that she's going to go in and she's going to come out just fine. We thank you, Lord God, that the spirit of fear will not overtake her. We come against anxiety that will try to overwhelm her and have her worried and, and concerned about this procedure. But God, we just say into your hands, we commit Miss Helen. We commit this issue, Lord God, and we decree and declare that everything will work out fine with this procedure. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I lift up Maddie Davis before you, oh God. I thank you, Father, for the work that you have begun in her life. I thank you, Father God, for giving her total health and restoration. I thank you, Father God, for even healing her heart, Father. Whatever has been going on in her heart, the irregular heartbeat, the heart murmur, the places that the doctors have said, it's a hardened place, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you're even sending now what needs to be sent, that you're the greatest cardiologist ever, that you will heal Miss Maddie's heart in Jesus' name. Father God, even what's going on in her body with blood pressure, and even with um, um, the uh, digestive issues, Father God, we're praying for total healing of Maddie Davis, and we ask, Lord God, your blessings upon her life even the more. I pray, God, that you will continue to strengthen her every day, continue to restore her body in Jesus' name. Oh, God, we just pray and we just lift up before you even now, Lord God. Lord God, in this atmosphere, I lift up the youth of the United House. I pray, Lord God, that you will just continue to bless them and be with them, oh God, in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord God, some ask for deliverance on the um, call this morning. Ask for deliverance in the Facebook Live. I ask God for total deliverance, God, for breakthrough in Jesus' name. I lift up Mother Barbara East before you, oh God. Father God, send your word to Pilot Mountain, God. You know all about Miss Barbara East and her needs, her wants and desires. I ask God that you will bless Mildred, bless Annie, bless Cody. Lord God, bless the entire East family. In Jesus' name, Lord God, Miss Janet Huntley is praying for her child this morning. We just pray your blessings over that child like only you can. In Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord God, for being a very present help in the time of trouble. We thank you, oh God, that you're a mighty God, that you're the uh, everlasting Father. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, this morning, I want to pray for somebody's strength, that they will feel like pressing on. They'll feel like just going on in spite of what the enemy is trying to do, trying to to sift them as we we pray lord god that you will send your word to heal them to deliver them to recover them now in jesus name father this morning before we transition and close out this time of prayer, I ask God your blessings over some nonprofit organizations. Send prosperity now. Send resources, oh God. I want to lift up the Jericho House in Greensboro, oh God. This program that serves so many men, Lord God, coming out of prison. So many that's coming out of bad situations, Lord God. And Father God, they charge them little to no rent, Father. So Father, I pray in this atmosphere that you will send resources resources now to the Jericho house in Greensboro, oh God, that this program will continue to grow, that every need in this program will be met in Jesus' name. Send your blessings now to the Hosanna house of transition, oh God, that serves so many that are mentally ill, so many with physical disabilities, mental disabilities, oh God, and even stigma attached to them as it relates to their criminal record, oh God. I pray, Lord God, that you will bless Sister Sandra Sherelle Oliver and the works of her hands and the commitment that she has just to help people and to empower them. So in this atmosphere, we want to pray and lift up Hosanna House in Jesus' name. Now, God, I ask God that you will uh, bless the Holly House, oh God, and all of the women that are there. And God, I pray for your blessings upon the administration. I pray, Lord God, for your divine insight on everything that's being said and done. I pray, Lord God, for all of these nonprofit organizations. Perhaps there are some that I didn't even pray for or mention, but God, God, this morning, I want to lift up nonprofit organizations before you, oh God, individuals who are willing to do the work for little to no money to serve your people. I pray and I lift up every nonprofit organization before you now in Jesus name. I thank you, Lord God, not only for nonprofits, but the church father. We want to pray for ministries, oh God. God, we thank you for so many ministries and all that's being done, even in our city, oh God, and the churches that are committed to show love and to win the loss and 
show compassion towards God's people. We pray your blessings upon every ministry now in Jesus' name. We're praying, God, for the finances of every ministry. We want to lift up the pastors of these ministries, oh God, the pastors, teachers, prophets. We want to cover spiritual leaders now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we're just praying this morning that you would even bless our governmental leaders, Father God, praying for our president, praying for um, state, local, federal government, oh God, that decisions are made to help and empower all of God's people in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we pray for your divine protection over every person on this call, over every person on Facebook Live. We pray for your divine protection even now in Jesus' name. As we transition from, from being in your presence, we ask God that you would just protect us. And for those who are going to be going out doing some shopping or spending time with family and friends, we just pray for your divine protection over them even now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, if there's any other prayer requests, that I have failed to pray for, or perhaps I didn't see those requests, I ask God that you will bless them even now. Um, I see Sister Janet um, has mentioned asking that we will pray for bears, for buddies, um, for the wishes of terminally ill children. So we want to continue to pray for those um, issues even as we transition from the call on this morning. So on this morning, I just want to close out with just praying and thanking God for the special gift that he's given us, the gift of life, the gift of health, the gift of healing. Oh God, we just bless you and we thank you, Father. Even for those who um, perhaps are, are still in a struggle, we want to lift up, God, the um, Carolyn Pouncey, the um, Lindsey Joyner, and um, even um, others who, who have lost loved ones, and maybe this is their first Christmas without a family member. We want to lift them up, Father God, because this is not going to be an um, a easy time, and we don't take it for granted. So we want to pray for those who are celebrating holidays for the first time without loved ones. So we want to lift them up before you even now. In Jesus' name. So, Lord God, as we leave this place but not your presence, we thank you for this time of prayer. We thank you for this time to just to be in your presence, to seek you first, God. And, God, we thank you for your gift of life. We thank you for the greatest gift of all, and that was your son, Jesus. So, Lord God, be with us to continue to sustain us until we meet again. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. All right. Well, God bless all of you. Thank you for joining us on today for the hour of power, prayer and empowerment call with you, the listener in mind. God bless you. I love you. Have a very merry, merry Christmas. Spend time with family. Um, love on somebody. Show somebody you appreciate them. You appreciate them. You love them. But most importantly, remember, you got that special gift. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, I'm a whosoever. You're a whosoever that we don't have to perish, but we can have everlasting life. So God bless you. I love you until next Saturday. God bless you and keep you. Mwah.